This past weekend at Road America, there was a lot to talk about. And a lot of people are talking about whether Road America should stay, go, whatever. But I think that one thing that's going way under the radar, even if people are talking about it, is Noah Gregson intentionally wrecking a good part of the field in the Xfinity race. And the fact that NASCAR, from what it seems, will do nothing to him. Now, I want to preface this by saying I am not a Noah Gregson hater. I personally think he is one of the best personalities the sport has and that people should want to have more outgoing personalities like him. But what he did on this past Saturday was egregious, it was dangerous, and it needs to be called out, and the culture of NASCAR needs to be called out. And I don't care if many other people have done this before or if I've done this before, this stuff needs to be called out every time. When you look back at the wreck that Noah Gregson caused, he caused a 13 car wreck out of 38 cars in the field. That is 34% or over one third of the field in total. Then when you look at how it went, you see that drivers had to go to the infield care center. The drivers were feeling out of breath. And this is something that NASCAR needs to take incredibly serious. But instead, NASCAR did nothing to Gregson. He continued to race and well, we're all talking about it now as it is in the past tense. Dale Jr. talked about it. He said that in Gregson's case, he needs to take that out of his toolbox. We can't be intentionally turning into guys on the straightaway, which is true. Jr. also said that he was absolutely shocked by it and that it's just not what he wants his driver to be doing, which good for him, but words from the owner are the only thing we're getting right now. And the thing that I really want to point out here, and a lot of younger fans might not remember this, but I certainly do, is that this isn't how it used to be. There is this weird fixation on the history of NASCAR that it was just a bunch of renegades constantly taking each other out and that this is just a return to roots because NASCAR used to be more strict. In the Bill France Jr. era, and even the early Brian France era, they were incredibly strict on rough driving. Rough driving was actually a penalty that could get you a loss of laps or just parked for the day back when these guys were running the sport, at least, again, in the early Brian France days, but certainly in the Bill France Jr. days. And warnings were going as far as for bump drafting. There were bump drafting bans at the super speedways because of the danger that they presented. Safety was paramount for everyone out there. And as it probably should have been, those cars back then were not as safe as they are today. And the drivers back then seemed to make more mistakes in a lot of ways than a lot of the top drivers do nowadays. But the problem that it was having at the time is that it was sucking the rebellious life out of NASCAR. While NASCAR was not a demolition derby by any means, there was a time where there was a lot of rough driving in the days of Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip and all of these other drivers who were known as very aggressive, but they weren't taking everybody out. But NASCAR kind of overshot the mark on this one. Again, I think rightfully so. And now something needed to change. It was very clear that the drivers were on eggshells at all times and they needed a way to express displeasure, anger, whatever it might be. So into 2010, we had a huge change of procedure from NASCAR. Boys have at it. You hear it all the way to today, and a lot of fans that are new will even talk about it without knowing the proper setting for it. It was just that NASCAR had seen they were overstepping, putting their fingers way too much into self-governing issues that the drivers could make among themselves. And so they stepped off, said, hey, you're not going to get penalized, fined, whatever. If you're just going back and forth, maybe even if you cause a wreck when you're trying to get a little revenge, bringing a little bit of the flair back in the NASCAR. But it wasn't long until we saw a huge change for the negative in this respect. Kozlowski was on track for a sixth place finish. Boy, that's... And we're told there was contact between Edwards and Kozlowski. And have we seen that somewhere once before? Talladega last year and early in this race at lap 41. A little crossover move here by Carl. Clean here, clean here. Just slight contact. Oh, Look at that gosh. thing go. 
While by no means do I or really anyone else think that Carl Edwards wanted Brad Keselowski to flip driver's side into the wall at Atlanta, it was still something that happened. But NASCAR, like it had said before the season, was going to be more lenient on him. And he continued to race even with this happening. This started, in my opinion, a downward spiral of driver etiquette. All that was needed right now with the way that drivers were starting to push the lines that had previously been established and now erased, all that was needed was just a push for anarchy. And in 2014, NASCAR and Brian France announced that push. The announcing of the 2014 chase format, which in a lot of people's mind is the start of the playoff era with eliminations and winner take all qualifications for the chase. The regular season wasn't nuts that year. It was actually incredibly great racing and is a good part of the reason that people remember 2014 as one of the best in NASCAR history. But the playoffs were nuts. Early in the playoffs, you saw a lot of people being desperate, pushing each other back and forth, but nothing too egregious. Then, in the second round of the chase that year, you started seeing fights. And then you saw fights in the third round. You saw people moving other drivers by body slamming them into the wall to get to the next round. Established veterans doing all of this. And it wasn't overboard, though. It wasn't. And so fans thought it was amazing. And like I said, many, including myself, see 2014 as one of the best seasons in NASCAR history. I can tell you in the 20 years I've watched NASCAR, it's got to be in my top five easily. But 2015 is where everything blew up. 2015 was a relatively bad year when you look at the racing products, storylines, drivers, everything like that. It was a boring year for racing. The unpopular drivers were winning most of the races, and it was pretty clear that there was a growing animosity for many in the garage area. The chief among them being Joey Logano, who went on a huge tear in the playoffs, winning a ton of races and asserting himself as the championship favorite. But in doing that, he had made one grizzly veteran just that much more angry, Matt Kenseth. He had pushed Matt Kenseth around for two of the three races leading up to the second to last round, the round right before the final four race. And because Kenseth, due to this, had been eliminated from the chase, he had nothing to lose. So when Logano and his teammate Brad Keselowski pushed further, as we all know, absolute chaos ensued at the hands of the old veteran. And Kenseth cleared by Logano, maybe no! Kenseth takes him out! Logano into the wall! Caution comes out and the crowd roars! In my opinion, this is where NASCAR had a crossroads. And this was the moment that NASCAR chose that a pure racing version of the sport would have to die forever. That it would go the wayside for this new bumping, banging, mayhem, winner take all, don't care about your competition NASCAR ensued. And I have to ask, while well, it felt great in the moment, it did. I was there. Was it worth it? Because this has led us where we are in the late 2010s and now in the early 2020s. The entertainment era. NASCAR has started to label itself in the past couple years as sports entertainment. And the word entertainment has a negative connotation when it comes to sports. It's linked with pro wrestling like the WWE, where people even will go as far to say that NASCAR is going to go scripted with it. And I think much of this, if not a majority, is due to the allure of chaos and lawlessness that NASCAR got from Boys Have At It, from letting drivers get away from this stuff and self-policing way more than they probably should by not governing and by having this playoff system just basically run rampant. And now you have younger drivers who have marinated in all this for their entire lives. You have drivers who have been born after the 2001 Daytona 500, know nothing except for the path that NASCAR is currently on. And this leads us back to the Noah Gregson incident. So I say, after talking about all of this, should NASCAR penalize Gregson? 
Off integrity, in my own opinion, yes. I think he should be parked for a race or two for that. It's egregious, dangerous, and if these cars were any less safe than they are now, somebody would be seriously injured, if not worse. This is the equivalent, in my opinion, of taking a cheap shot at the side of someone's helmet during an NFL game. But off the current precedent, should he be penalized? No. This is the path that NASCAR's chosen. It won't stop. It won't change because this is the chaos, the storylines that the networks, that the execs, that everybody wants. And it's not going to change. It's not going to stop until there's another 2001 Daytona 500. So now I'm passing it to you. Do you think NASCAR should penalize Noah Gregson for what he did on Saturday? Let me know down in the comments below. And let me know about what you think of the culture that NASCAR has created. I'd love to hear what you guys think on this subject. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And all my channel members, thank you for your continued support. So until next time, have a good one.